Hello YouTube. So today I'll be uh, trying to build an injector pop tester out of some old ball jacks. And I thought I'd bring some awareness to a couple different styles. One I found probably isn't a good candidate to change into a pop tester. This specific one here is, I mean, what you're looking for is the nice top here that you can actually break loose on thread and pull apart. This style ended up not being. I wanted to really use this style for the simple fact that it's 30 years old, so I'm not. It doesn't owe me a thing. I'm not going to miss it much. Uh, but the problem was, is it's nice and welded. And even though it looked welded, I thought, well, maybe it's actually threaded and all the gunk on here. I can't tell. I took a pipe wrench to it, tried to twist it all off. It didn't. It just started crushing it. And, and even though it's two ton, it should work fine for a pop tester because what dictates a lot of these uh, having the lift capacity they do is this one's got a bigger ram on it compared to this one. And how PSI works is it's pounds per square inch. So every time you go up in size with a piston, you're actually increasing the lifting capacity because it's more inches to have more pounds on. Another thing I wanted to mention here is if you're looking for a pressure gauge and you're like, hey, I can't find any that go up to the PSI I need for a cheap price, go to a hydraulic, uh, a hydraulic shop. I mean, any shop that rebuilds hydraulics and stuff should be able to order these in. I went online, people were like charging anywhere from, you know, 50 to 150 dollars for this size of gauge. And this is just a glycerin fill gauge. I actually picked up from a local hydraulic shop for 19 bucks. So, you know, it's always good to shop around on them. They were the same exact gauge. I actually looked at both of them from the different places. And uh, one from the hydraulic joint looked exactly the same, but was way cheaper. Okay, so I drained most of the oil out. Now I'll disassemble this so everybody can take a look at how these are designed. I'm actually taking this out like this because there's an O-ring down here. That should contain any oil that didn't drain out within everything. As you see, this cap right, right in. Everything pulled right out real easily. It's not much to these. I mean, see, that's just a pissing down here with some O-ring. Dump the rest of this out. Then this part lifts right off. hollow piece. All that's used for is to contain the oil. And you got another tubed piece right here. As you can see, you got some holes for intake and release. And it pumps it through here. And this piston applies pressure to this. I actually found something interesting. I was looking through some pipe taps I had. And I was curious if I could actually find one that might work. And I noticed I do have a pipe tap that looks like it will fit right in there. And I'm thinking I might try to pipe tap this. But I also noticed there's a little hole right here by this thread that I believe is used as a relief of some sort to allow air and oil to get in there. So I don't think they'll get any problems, but we'll try it out and see. Because I believe once I thread it in there, it should be fine. It looks like it has plenty of uh, remaining metal once I tap it to still be strong. All right, what I've decided to do here is after seeing how when I tried to take this piece out on this jack here, it actually kind of started crushing this pipe. So I'm going to assume that's some pretty soft stuff, and I think this should thread easy. <clears throat> My concern was how am I going to get the pipe vein through this? I mean, when you look at it from the top, it's obviously not going to fit. So I flip it over and I'm going, is there something I could grind with it? And will it interfere with the old threads? And it seems like I got some substantial state space here to make use of. And you can see the lip inside there. Now, you can either take a drill press, but usually when you got bits this big, it's hard to do. Or you can take a uh, burring stone and grind out. I'm just going to chuck it in the lathe, but if you don't have a lathe, those are things you can do to do that. And I don't see this causing a weakness because, you know, 
it's got to push through this piece once this is thread tight even if this is expanding it's going to expand it up into these threads anyway all right so i'm going to actually pipe tap this and uh, i stuffed some paper towel in there so that'll allow me the wood wood shaving is not going there and then i'm actually once i get a good started thread i'm going to take it out of the vise flip it over and uh, thread it that way to further keep all those metal shavings out of there. How I've always started threading, and this is a pipe tap, is uh, I'll push down and turn. And I try to hold this as stable as possible while I do it. Then I'll back thread just a little, and that breaks off that little bit curling. Because in softer metals, what happens is they'll actually start tearing your thread. And uh, I want to try to have a good piece of thread here. Now, also the reason I'm putting the pipe wrench this high is uh, if I put it down near where I'm tapping, it'll actually squeeze near the threads and cause an inaccurate thread and also make your life a lot harder threading. Now, we'll see how deep I got here and test out the thread on that one. Because with a pipe uh, uh, tap, you're not tearing it down all the way. It's a tapered thread. All right, I don't get very much bite in this. I'm actually going to thread it a bit further. I'm not happy with that. All right, I felt some binding there. See? Work back and forth here because it's catching pretty hard. There we go. Some nice clean threads so far. Sitting about that deep in. Right up the tip of my finger. I believe that's going to be uh, tight enough for what we're doing. All right, let's do a dry fit here and see how everything fits together. With any luck, everything will fit together as it should. That's a little close, but if worse comes to worse, I could always grind this edge off a little bit on this fitting. But uh, it looks like it's going to work out for me, so I'm happy about that. I'm going to show you some of what I uh, JB welded. Uh, this is just a, a vent hole on this particular piece. Now the area I JB welded was there was a little pinhole on this uh, thread here and I noticed it didn't seem like anything I was going to put through there was going to plug that back up. Right now I'll just chase it with a tap real quick because JV Well did seep through to the other side. Oh, that's not the right tap. Again, three quarter inch pipe tap. It should thread through that JV Well no problem. Set that on first. I'll set this on. Then we'll take my other piece that I've already made out. And before I put it in, actually, I'm going to put just a touch of pipe dope on this. I want the pipe dope going into everything. It's already not going to go into everything because see how that fits in there? So, I just make sure I don't get it on the inside here because I don't want that getting into my injectors. Remember, pipe threads are a tapered thread. So, that's why you can go a little high and it just will squish down as you tighten it. Alright, got my larger crescent here. I'll just give this just a slight snug up on top. These don't need to be very tight, just tight enough not to leak. I'm sick of that. Let's put this in the vise. Got some gaps in my vise, so it misses everything that shouldn't be squished. <laughs> 
since I don't need to break and bend some of that. This wasn't very tight when I went to take it off, so I'm just kind of using that as my guideline with this. So yeah, I don't even have that very tight in there. This one, on the other hand, will be handling a few thousand PSI, so we want this definitely tight. Also, when you put this on, something I should mention right away, just make sure your little fill screw here is where you can easily get to it. So that's where we'll be dumping the diesel into to pressure test. going to be. Just hoping to get another 180 degrees out of this. Well, maybe I still can. If that's going to be tight enough, now I can add my gauge. This has actually got a very, very fine hole in the back. Another thing you can actually clog up and ruin your day. <laughs> Using some liquid pipe dope on this as well. Again, making sure I'm not getting it deep enough in threads where it's actually going to get into anything. Alright, smaller crescent here. Never turn these gauges on the outside, that's a quick way to ruin it. Nothing like a uh, turn on the outside and ruin a brand new gauge. Alright, now I'm going to install my ejection line. Just decide in what way I'd like to place it. I think we'll place it down. That should allow for a straight down pattern with my uh, injector. And I'll probably set some sort of jar. I got some old mason jars that nobody wants, so I use those. And I'm just going to finger tighten that for now because what I want to do is fill this up with diesel fuel and purge it. And purge it. So, because that's a lot of space I'm going to have to fill up where that ram used to be. So I can imagine I'll be filling it up quite a few times. So I got to thinking, how, what's the best way I want to fill this up on the cheap? I mean, the original ones, they have a tank with a filter. This one, as I've said earlier, it's a big ram. It should settle out. And plus, I'm going to take extra care at what I add to it. I was originally thinking, hey, I got some syringes laying around. Why don't I use those? Because, you know, I'm going to the farm store taking care of cattle. And I've got syringes to stick around. And I went, wait. You know, what if I'm not a farmer or anything like that or farmer with cattle? What's something else I might have laying around my shop? That hit me. An old gear lube bottle. Those work perfect. Got that nice small tip. I can go up on my jack. And, and I don't see a reason to add all that extra tankage on top of it because something I'm going to use maybe a couple times in 10 years. I don't see myself wanting to open a repair shop to do this for people, so stick it in that hole and fill it up. The type of fuel I'm using is a mix of number one and number two dyed diesel. It's used for a tractor, so I don't see any problem with that. If you're doing a street vehicle, you might want to avoid the dyed. 
just for the fact that uh, it's illegal to run on the road. I'll turn that off and give her some pumps. I don't see any fuel really leaking. This is just some I spilled, so. There it already is. All right, didn't take that much at all. I'm actually surprised it didn't come out of here. I didn't even tighten that section yet up there, so we'll get that nice and tightened. I'm gonna actually turn this up so the injector's more pointed away from me if something does go wrong. So I have some troubleshooting off camera. I had a bunch of fittings leak. Some I had to take apart. Some I had to actually use Teflon tape because my uh, pipe dope was not working. And the injector I thought was bad that I used to make sure my pop tester was functioning is actually fine once I figured all the leaks out. So that's something to conserve before you're going through and thinking, well, that injector's bad. You might actually have pinhole leaks somewhere. So here we go. Nice pop on that. <laughs> 